So I am reading ultrasounds today in an outline clinic and I am freezing to death. So I have on my jacket. But anyway, I want to share with y'all this model I happened to come across in the office that I'm sitting in. So this model right here is actually a really cool model of the pelvic anatomy. So let's go through it. So this would represent what the anatomy looks like if we were looking at someone uh, from the side. This here is the pubic bone, bladder, urethra. Then this is going to be the vagina, cervix, uterus, fallopian tube, ovary, and see how the fallopian tubes and the ovaries go towards the back side of the uterus. They're not out side to side like a scarecrow arms. So they actually go to the back side of the uterus. Then here is the rectum, anus, um, and the spine, the bones of the spine, this way. So you can see how closely, uh, how anatomically close urethra, vagina, rectum, anus are. And you can see that in real life, the fallopian tubes and the ovaries are pointed towards the back side of the uterus, not out straight like scarecrow arms. And this is the view that we see when we're doing a speculum exam. So if you pretend like this is a speculum here, sorry, going in here is going to be the vaginal vault. And then this is going to be the cervix and the cervical os or the opening of the cervix. And that's what we see when we do a, a, a speculum exam. And if like we're doing a, um, uh, pap smear, um, that is the face of the cervix that we would see. Let me give you a few more relevant important points when it comes to pregnancy. The bladder is right anterior or on the top, on the front side of the uterus. So as the uterus gets bigger with pregnancy, the bladder is down here on the lower part of the uterus. So if someone has a bladder infection, you might feel what we call suprapubic or above the pubic bone pain um, because of where that bladder is located. Also, when we do a cesarean section, the bladder is attached to the front side of the uterus through some tissue. So sometimes we have to take that bladder down by taking the tissue down to remove the bladder from the lower part of the uterus, which is where we'd make the incision for a C-section. The position of this uterus is antiverted because you can see it goes, makes a little bend and points towards the bladder. It could also be midline where it goes straight back and more of a straight line. Or it can be retroverted, where the curve, you see this little curve here, instead of going forward towards the bladder, it would go backwards towards the rectum. That would be a retroverted uterus. During the menstrual cycle and ovulation, a lot of times people can have GI issues like constipation or diarrhea due to the release of the hormones and also the close, close proximity of everything that's going on with ovulation and the menstrual cycle to the rectum. Um, so that becomes affected as well. So if you're someone who has diarrhea or constipation around the time of your menstrual cycle, um, that is why. If you have ever been to get a pelvic exam and the doctor counseled you about getting a rectal, rectal exam in addition to a vaginal exam or bimanual exam as part of your pelvic exam, that's because if you do a rectal exam and or you're, that's because if you're concerned about a cyst or something going on with the uterus, tubes, or ovaries, sometimes doing an exam or a rectal exam can help facilitate the exam because of the close proximity of all of these organs. Now, before anyone does a rectal exam on you, even if they're doing a vaginal exam or a pelvic exam uh, through the vagina, a sterile or a uh, bimanual exam, they need to get consent and not just surprise you with a rectal exam. What other questions might you have for me?